Attention, all project coordinators who are ready to level up their careers, are you feeling stuck? In your current role, of course, and you're tired of watching or wait, let me step back. And you're frustrated <laughs> at watching others get promoted to a project manager. Do you know you have what it takes to lead projects, but don't know how to show it? If that's you and you answered yes to that question, then this episode is a game changer for you. What we're going to do in today's episode, we're going to share the exact steps you need to prove your worth and potentially, and I use the word potentially and possibly land that next promotion. Again, family, you have to do the work. It doesn't matter if anything else happens if you are unwilling to do the work. If you're new to the channel, I go by the name of ED for you smart and intelligent folks out there. Listen, I, that just simply means it. I have an eight point framework and these eight points, my goal, my mission, my job today is to unpack today's title, which is entitled how to get promoted to project manager from project coordinator to project manager. You mind if I share a story with you? I got a call um, probably recently. I'll just say recently because if I say <laughs> it might name some names, but I got a call recently. And during this conversation, the person said to me, hey, listen, um, currently I'm a project coordinator and I'm making the transition from, I want to make the transition to, you know, full-time project manager. So of course I start asking some questions like, how long have you been with the organization? Uh, what are, I mean, what is the, the leadership style there? What is the other project manager? So I'm asking a bunch of questions. So long story long, basically what I was advised is that, Hey, he's only had been there for like two to three months. And the people that were, there were two project managers ahead of him. It was actually a, a project manager, then a senior project manager that both of them left the organization and he said, Hey, this, he thought it would be a great opportunity to take advantage of it because there, you don't have a senior PM or a regular, or, or I say regular or project manager. And he asked my thoughts and I said, I think you should go for uh, the senior project manager role. And if it doesn't, if you can't get the senior project manager role and lean back on the project manager role. Now the question is, is why would I tell him to go for the senior project manager role versus the project manager role? Well, the reason why I did that family is because of this, th this way you can figure out where your gaps are, where your areas of opportunity, meaning when, when I say that of understanding what you're going to need for each step, meaning, so you're probably going to need a collection of these things. Maybe it may be your leadership style. Maybe it may be the, your communication style, uh, for each particular uh, position, but I did outline a, a plan of attack for him. And I'm going to kind of give you some of the things that I actually shared with him um, that I really believe would be useful for someone out there that's thinking about making a transition into project manager or even project or senior project manager. Now, again, I know the title of this episode is entitled uh, going from a project coordinator to a project manager, but it would fit all the same. So let's unpack these eight points and see if that really works for you. Point number one, develop and deliver project presentations. You know, one of the things family, when you take the, when you take the opportunity to take the lead on developing and delivering project presentations to various stakeholders, uh, that's including like executive customers, team members, um, and just demonstrating your presentation and communication style, that is going to be huge because as a project manager, we do this so much. Uh, and so you were already have the training and it, it would be like you're just literally walking into your to your gift. So, you know, because I know there are some serious ones out there that are project coordinators or even thinking about being a project coordinator. And the first thing they think of is like, OK, now I got this project coordinator role. What is some actionable steps to get prepared for the project management role. And I love those people. And if you're one of those people, hit a uh, project coordinator in the uh, comments. Okay, anyway, uh, here's an actionable step. Identify a project presentation opportunity and work with your manager as well as the uh, project manager to develop a presentation plan that truly outlines the specific goals, 
audience, because you always know I say you always have to know your audience and the content for the presentation. This is going to be key because doing this, uh, you're going to develop best practices like IE, like storytelling, being able to take data and create a visual visualization of it. Also, the engagement of the audience, because especially with executives, you have more of a high level approach and because they want to have more of a open conversation and ask you, you questions because it goes twofold. First, they're trying to check to see if you know what you're doing when you're leading this project. And two, there may be some things that they really are concerned about because of previous projects and previous history. Uh, with different stakeholders. So they want to make sure you're getting everything you need and how you answer the question is going to be imperative of how they're going to respond uh, to you. All right. Point number two, resolve project conflicts. You always know I always talk about project conflicts here because a lot of times I feel that um, when a project coordinator is stepping into a project manager role, they assume and they take on all conflicts. And a lot of times the you know, coordinator is not aware of the uh, project of the conflicts that may be going on because if you're not paying attention, these conflicts can happen via email. You may be thinking as a project coordinator, oh, they're having a good conversation back and forth via email. But as a seasoned project manager, you want to stop that right away because what you don't want to happen is context being um, misinterpreted on via email versus if you got on a phone and you guys talk through it and then recap what the conversation is, is, is a better way to go about it. But maybe as a coordinator, you're looking at it as like, oh, they're trying to work it out. No, 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 no. You want to stop that right away and set up a call. But let's talk about this right here by taking on taking on the opportunity to resolve project conflicts. And that just looks like taking the lead and identifying and resolving project conflicts. Now, this can include really around scope, resources, uh, one of my favorites, um, stakeholder ex expectations, because sometimes, you know, stakeholders will have these crazy expectations. And if you don't um, really harness that in, it's going to be very challenging. So and then you're, this by resolving conflicts, you use something that I believe is one of the key foundational principles of project management, which is problem solving. Have, now you're having the ability to exercise that problem solving and negotiating skills. So here's an actionable step. I'm, I'm all of these. I'm giving actionable steps because I'm really passionate uh, when I when you have great or exceptional project coordinators going to that next step, I want to make sure you guys have all the tools that you need. So you probably want to listen back to this a couple more times. So identify a current or, or potential project conflict and develop a conflict resolution plan that outlines, or I should say outlines, I say outline, outlines the specific steps and techniques you will use to address and resolve this conflict. That is key, family. Those first two right there, like I can stop the video and I can say, well, we'll make a part two because those two right there, being able to deliver uh, your, your, pro your project presentation and being able to resolve conflicts, whoo. Right there, you've already done probably about 40 to 45 percent of the of the job, but there's more. Let's move on to point number three. Identify and manage project dependencies. This is something family having the ability to identify and manage project de dependencies are going to be huge. So what does that look like? Having the ability to proactively identify and manage project dependencies. Now, this can include uh, sort of like cross projects or cross functional dependencies. And this lets them know that you're demonstrating a systems thinking and coordination skills. I know people are like, what do you mean systems? Meaning that this is my translation of it of, okay, how about I give you an actionable step first? Actionable step, conduct a dependency analysis for your current project and see if there's any key dependency that could impact uh, your project success. Now this includes, I want you to be uh, uh, cognizant of this. Now this can include other projects, teams, and or uh, resources. So going back to system thinking, when I look at systems thinking, I in my remix way, so you know, right or wrong, but really I look at it for a standpoint of having the ability to get create a more cohesive approach to leading your project. So if you have a project manager that's currently leading a project, 
and maybe they're overwhelmed and you step in and say, hey, listen, let me help you with uh, identifying and managing the project dependencies. And you go out and start uh, really building a building relationships with people that are leading projects, project manager are leading projects and say, hey, this is our project. Is there anything that you guys are doing that's related to this or anything that I need to uh, be cognizant of when it comes to that? Let's move on to point number four. Point number four, manage project resource allocation. Listen, you already know the iron triangle. If I could put on the iron triangle resources, whew, I would really put resources on there because I am noticing in these days and times, the ability to manage and lead your resources uh, effectively is going to be key going forward. I'm noticing that sometimes um, the reason why I feel like it's key is because of the priority shifts or because, hey, we just don't have a resource that uh, a subject matter expert that could fit that. So you might need to step in or you may need to use, to, need to use somebody uh, to help you with that. So they're taking on two different tasks. One that's actually in their warehouse, one that they're, ah, they have some experience in. So again, um, volunteer to take on the responsibility of managing project resource allocation. Now this can include having the ability to identify resources needed, negotiating resource excitement. That is key. You always see negotiation and persuasion. And like I said, I think I'm going to actually do a sales present persuasion, um, uh, video as well as audio around just sales persuasion as a project manager. I think that's key. And then, okay, let me continue. I get excited. I'm sorry, family. Then communicating resource status to de demonstrate your resource management skills. Here's an actionable step. I said, I'm going to give you eight actionable steps. If I didn't, well, now, you know, work with your manager to identify project resource allocation that you, you family can take ownership of and develop a resource management plan. Now this can include specific processes, um, specific tools for tracking and communicating resource status. Point number five, develop and implement project communication plans. Message, you know, anytime I say message, this is the point right here. I don't care what you're doing. Please put it down. You want to pay attention here, family. The reason why is, is that when you have a communication plan by taking the lead and developing and implementing, that, that is the key word, don't develop it and it just be an artifact sitting on a shelf. No, develop and implement a, a project communication plan to ensure all stakeholders are informed. Better yet, engaged throughout the project life uh, cycle. So here's an actionable step. Identify a project that needs communication plans, meaning work with the project manager to develop a plan that outlines communication goals, channels, as well as the frequency to each stakeholder uh, group, group. Now let's unpack, let me, let's unpack, you know what a communication goal is. Like here's a communication goal. Um, my goal is to get ensure that all uh, meeting recaps will be sent out at you know 24 hours after the meeting. Channels are basically your medium of where you're going to communicate. Is this going to be via email? Is this going to be via Teams or Asana? Or are you going to put this on a SharePoint or a share file? So those are the channels. So again, family, by doing, by taking this on, because I know I have a lot of uh, project coordinators that listen to me, which I appreciate, much respect. And those that want to be project managers, again, respect to you because of the fact that um, this is going to be key for you as you're planning out your particular uh, roadmap. Point number six, conduct a project lessons learned event. Well, what do you mean event? Okay, listen, what you want to do family is volunteer to conduct project lessons learned reviews. Let me stop. Let me stop here. A lot of times as project managers, we're guilty of this. I've been guilty of this and I've shared, shared with you because I always want to be transparent with you is that when I would do my lessons learned, <laughs> I would do it at the end of the project. And then um, one day I said, you know what? I know, I, and, and it wasn't because I didn't want to do it during the project. It was a simple fact that I would get caught up in everything else, which is an excuse. So I said, no more excuses. Let's figure out how do we resolve this. And so I started keeping a track of, you know, little small things that would come up and just kept it on an Excel document. 
And let me tell you the value in that family, because sometimes when you, uh, as a project manager, uh, when you resolve something, you just move on. It's like, oh, we figured out a resolution to that. Yes, let's move on to the next thing. And then you may have forgotten how you resolved it. What was the actual problem? So again, family, what I recommend to you, uh, take on, help a project manager conduct a project lessons learned and stay in tune with that project manager. Make sure that they're, that they're keeping track of the lessons learned throughout the entire entirety of the project. Here's an actionable item for you. Identify a recently completed project that you can conduct a lessons learned review for. After you do that, set up the meetings um, and really set the, the course as far as around the specific goals, topics, as well as the stakeholders that's gonna be part of this particular meeting. Point number seven, facilitate project meetings. You know, sometimes people think that setting up a meeting as a project manager is so easy. Like, oh, all you're doing is setting up the meeting. But what they don't talk about is the ability to stay on topic when people want to talk about everything else outside of the project or outside of business. How do, how can you get them to shift? How can you do it in a way where it's, it's, it's not crass or I should say um, more or less of trying to push somebody to have a good conversation because that's what you're really trying to do. But how do you do that? Well, what you do is, is you start the call off. You lead with authority. So what I would recommend, especially for project coordinators or people that are thinking about becoming a project coordinator that would allow them to transition into project management, you, you want to be able to, uh, here's an actionable step, you want to be able to identify a project meeting that you can facilitate. This is what you want to do, family. If you're, you know, my process was, uh, Put, when I put together a meeting is around purpose. What's the purpose of this meeting and two to three outcomes that I'm trying to get out of. But if you haven't really conducted meetings a lot of times, I will say start with the basics. And the basics is, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put an agenda together. I may have one or two PowerPoint slides um, and then uh, I will facilitate the meeting uh, accordingly. When I hear people trying to cut each other off or or whatever, I will be the one to step up and step in and say, hey guys, we need to respect everyone's time uh, as, they're, as they're speaking. If we can't, then I'm gonna have to set up, you know, different type of meetings. And that has happened before, family, where you may have a group of 25 of people or more on a call and people wanna over talk and you may say, hey, maybe this is too big. Let us, I'll just reduce it down to, I have a meeting over here with the people in tech and I have a meeting over here with people in operation. So that way people won't start trying to talk over each other. Okay, point number eight, mentor and train project team members. You'll say, well, I'm just a project coordinator. How can I mentor and uh, train anyone? Oh, you're not thinking outside the box, but I got you. Take on a mentoring or training a role for a newer or less experienced project team members to, de to demonstrate your actual leadership and coaching skills. Listen, if someone new, like a new stakeholder comes onto the project, you take it upon yourself, especially if they're new to the organization, to get engaged with them and say, hey, let me get you, I would love to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you to get you up to speed or where the project is. I'd love to be your go-to person. If you have any questions, if I have to bring the project manager in, if it's you know too in depth, uh, I would definitely do that. But listen, this is this is key. I used to do this all the time. Um, here's an actionable step: identify a team member who could benefit. That's the key word, benefit. Because again, sometimes people will waste your time just to waste your time, and sometimes they do it intentionally, and sometimes they just don't know why they're doing it. But here we go. Uh, benefit from your because they can benefit from your guidance and expertise, and offer to mentor them on a specific project management skill or topic. See family, when I when I when I cook up these episodes, I said cook up these episodes. I cook up these episodes. I am learning just as much as you are learning because it just is giving me a chance not to be what we call in the world of PMP a a, a paper PMP. So, ability to do presentations as I'm doing and and, and being as they call it a talking head. But really talking about some of my lessons learned that I've learned along my past of my what a decade or more of project management I'm, I'm giving back to the community that has really poured into me so 
Again, family, look at ways that you can mentor that particular person. I have two two bonuses and the last one, the last bonus, you're definitely gonna, gonna wanna tune into. Volunteer for stretch assignments. You know, I always talk about volunteering. Like people say, well, they're not letting me, uh, you know, get on any projects or lead any projects because I'm a project coordinator or I don't have any project management experience. I always say look outside of your organization where they're they're looking for volunteers and go up to them and say, hey, I don't have enough experience in uh, project management, but I would love to. Um, is there any way that I could help and learn at the same time? And I'm giving up my time to learn from you. Uh, so this is what I always recommend. Identify a project task or deliverable that's typically handled by the project manager. And again, you're going to have to volunteer to take that, take that on as a lead with support and guidance from your current uh, project manager. Here's my last and final bonus family. And this is how I was going to help you. I started to do the whole thing, you know, at the beginning of this, uh, the, uh, the audio and say, hey, if you stay to the end, the, the last one, but I'm like only my true diehard uh, people that love um, the content that I'm putting out. I want them to be able to take advantage of this. So this bonus right here, this is solved. If you don't remember any of all the things I just discussed, this one is an another key one. So I'm going to say, guess what? Message. Schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with your manager. Listen, family, if your goal is to be a project manager and you're currently a project coordinator, or maybe you're not a project coordinator and you want to get into project management, you want to be able to put together a roadmap. You want to put it together. And then you go into your, your, your project, I mean, you go into a meeting with your manager and say, hey, I'm really looking at this career field. Now, again, there are some caveats here. Um, what do you mean, ED? First of all, you got to understand, is your organization about career growth? I can't answer that question. I've been in organizations where they're not really big on career development. I've been in other organizations where they, uh, I mean, they care so much about your career development that if you don't, <laughs> if you don't develop in your career, you may uh, get, you may get wrote, written up because of the fact they really care about your um, development. If a position is not working out for you and there's an opportunity uh, within the organization, they would love for you to do that, especially if you if you have a unique skill set. What is a unique skill, skill set? A skill set that you're willing to learn. Mm -hmm. So I would say collaborate with your manager, put together a roadmap. And again, here, I'm going to say this caveat again. You have to be in an environment which they're looking to develop you in your career because if not, if you go to your manager and you say, hey, I want to be a project manager and let's say you're an accountant and they're going to be like, okay, great. Uh, well, we don't have any project management roles and then next thing you know, they may manage you out. So you want to be, you want to be cautioned and careful about this approach, but you want you, as you're having one-on-ones with your manager, there's ways to sell him or her to the reason why you want to be a project coordinator, one, I mean, excuse me, a project manager, one of the ways to do it is to, you know, to ask, hey, is it okay during my lunchtime or if I come in early, can I um, partner with a project coordinator or project manager to learn what they're doing? Now, this is your own time, your lunchtime, and definitely before, let's say your shift starts at nine and you're like, hey, I'm going to come in at eight and I'm a, I'm just going to shadow this project manager around and see what they do. Most managers would be like, wow, yeah, I want to help you. Whatever, whatever you need from me, as long as your other work doesn't slip, I'm here to support you. So again, family, if you want to know more about that, reach out to me. And again, because it's, it's huge. I mean, it's, there's, there's so many different ways to attack this. If you want to get into project manager, if you're currently a project coordinator and you want to get become a project manager, there's different ways to attack it. If you're not a project coordinator and you're just trying to even get into the project coordinator role, there's another way to attack that as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know my name. I go by the name of ED. Until next time, I'm out.